Okay, welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio uh, 42. Uh, today I'm going to be tr trying to do a little bit of uh, some of this plant that uh, kind of grows up. Once you plant it, it spreads everywhere, almost like onions. <laughs> if you <laughs> try to plant onion, boy, does they spread. I got in trouble on that one. I tried to pl plant some onions one time in my wife's flower garden, and she's been pulling onions ever since. Um, this particular plant um, came from my uh, father-in-law's uh, over on Lindsay Street and um, I asked my wife what type of, you know, what's the name of the flower? She said my father used to call it pink. So we'll just say it's, it's pink. It's a small, it's a small blossom, about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit larger. and. Uh, and uh, it, it buds out, uh, kind of spreads out everywhere. And because we've had so much rain this, uh, this summer so far, this spring and summer, uh, what's happened is that the, the plant has grown very tall. And when it rains, the weight of the rain pulls it over and it plops over all over the other plants and into the walkway and so forth. So. Uh, uh, I thought I'd give it a try today to s see what we could do with it. And what, what I did first was, uh, of course, put the tape down, make, make uh, the tape in, uh, in, uh, in the area so that it would be kind of when we pull the tape off, you get a sort of a false mat around a uh, picture. And uh, then um, I used the marker, I used permanent markers the only problem with permanent markers is you have to use them uh, when the paint's dry or before you start painting because the, uh, the marker ink doesn't uh, mix well with water. So that's why I put in some of the lines. Now, if this is dry enough, uh, I can start adding a few more lines into it, and I probably will, some of the leaves that, that grow around the base. Um, a lot of times when I do plants that are out in the wild, um, I don't have them in a vase. You could very easily uh, to show the vase to also, but sometimes I just let the stems kind of meander off, uh, fade away t to the edge of the paper, and uh, uh, it looks like it, they're growing in the wild and not cut or confined to any particular thing. So if this is dry, I'm just going to do something with the marker. I just want to see. Yeah, okay. It works. It's dry enough so I can use the marker. Now, um, the next thing is uh, I want to show, usually what I do with the flowers, I, I, I kind of get an idea of the proportions of the, uh, the plant to uh, the, the uh, size of the paper. And what I might do is take my pencil and indicate some of the leaves. Some of the leaves are really around the base of the plant. Now, if I draw them in with a pencil, they don't show up too well on, uh, at home on your TV. That's why I usually sometimes just use a marker to begin with, and then uh, they show up. You could probably use a, a, a pen uh, the only trouble with the pen, the, the marks will stay in there unless you hide them. So if you wanted to show some of the leaves, then you could go uh, a little bit lighter or darker, depending on the, the background. And I can put in some of the, some of the leaf shapes. Let's see, oh, this is a good one to practice on to start off with. See how that works? You can kind of paint the leaf in there. Now what I do a lot of times is uh, I'll, I'll uh, take the marker after I finish and sort of outline it a little bit more and, and so that the, the picture carries across the room further. You know, you can see it a little bit better. So I've been doing this style for a while um, and then uh, get a little bit more water and paint on the brush. You can mix a uh, blue with the yellow, and you can get some nice soft effects 
or you can go a little bit darker, maybe with the, the green. That one didn't show up too well, but I just left it the way it is. Well, you're getting some leaves in here. Um, if you look at the uh, display here, I just took some of the plant off. Oh, they're spreading all over the place. And uh, so um, I just broke off a couple of pieces of it. And he, he put a lot of leaves in the background. You don't have to spend a lot of time on, on being too fussy painting in the shape. If you want that point, just lift up on the brush on the end. Uh, and it brings the, uh, the leaf out to a point. I'll do a couple more, put a couple more. And see how you can pick that leaf. You can put those leaves in there pretty fast. Let's put some something down around the, the base here. Now this is what I usually do when I, uh, I'm painting, is uh, I'll start with a, like a background wash, uh, soft, you know, lighter color, and then I'll, I'll start in and do some of the leaves first. And then the finale is usually putting in either the buds starting to form on the tips or uh, put in some of the flowers that have blossomed out. They, they don't all just bloom out all at the same time. So that means this particular type of plant, uh, I'll call it the pink plant, <laughs> the pink flowers, uh, they'll come out at different times. So, you, so probably the color would, will last maybe two or three weeks or better. Um, a lot of plants, if they blossom just about all, all at the same time, They'll last for a few days, and then that's the end of them. And all you see of the plant for the rest of the summer is just a green, just a green part, the stem, and the leaves. And that's that's what happens a lot of times. Okay, you, you could practice doing these uh, leaves in here. Like I said, you, you, just to make it interesting, I usually mix a little bit of blue in, into the green. You can also have some yellow come out in the uh, leaves. After a while, you get used to uh, a little bit painting. You know, you don't have to spend uh, too much time being too fussy with the shape of a leaf. You just go one side and then come back down the other, fill in the middle. That's about it. I'll do another one over here. One side. Come back down, oops, <laughs> and fill in the center. It, nothing that, that uh, takes uh, that long uh, uh, or that m amount of time. Okay, here we go. Let's put a few other shades and color in there down around the bottom. I don't like to show too much of the white paper coming through, but um, I do sometimes. I do sometimes uh, have some of the paper show through. I don't like um, some some artists. They they leave too many of uh, the little specks in there, and it might be a summer a painting of a flower garden. But with all those white specks, it seems like it looks like you know they look like snowflakes. So here we go. Let's add some color in here. Fill in a little bit of the background there. I kind of jump around. Um, if you kind of watch some of my other programs and shows, you, you know that I, I don't finish off one particular spot. I kind of jump around and use this, basically the same color. I may change it a little bit, but not much. Might be a little bit lighter or darker or whatever. Put some shadow in it or something. You, if you paint something in while it's uh, still wet, it, it will settle into the paper. But also after it dries, you can rechange the shape. And uh, I do that sometimes. Let's say if I let's say this is too too dark. Okay, while it's still wet, take a paper towel. See how we can blot that and lighten that up. 
This, if this one's still a little bit dark, I, I highlight it. Now suppose that it's dried out too much and it's not taking much paint away. So what I do, just go over that shape again, say, repaint it, and then while it's still wet, now I blot it. And, and you get different effects that way. Sometimes it works out pretty good. So if, sometimes it, if it's too noticeable, I just take it, it cut it down quite a bit. You know, take a lot of uh, that color out of it. Now, um, the uh, like I said, the blossoms are very pretty. Uh, it's awful hard to match uh, the color. It's almost like um, well, I can start off with. Um, Let's say I'm going to use a different brush, a small one. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, some of my um, Elizabeth Crimson. Now they have another name for her. They call it Quinacridone Rose. One of my favorite colors, by the way. It really is. Put a, a little pinch of um, blue in there, and. Uh, as far as the flower goes, like I said, usually the, the uh, blossom is about the size of a quarter. Can you, can, you can imagine that. Uh, so wherever I want to put a flower, I just put a little speck there, a dot. And, and then I just fan out from that dot, just pull some of that color out in there, see, like that. And then you do another one, you could jump around dot and then go around the dot just pull pull some of that color out that's how that works now sometimes what i do with a flower too instead of just pulling it out what i do is just make some uh, let's do this one okay here's the dot and i just put some dots in around it so put put some sort of dot just tap the brush and you get that effect. So it depends on what, what you're looking for. Let's start another one up here. Okay, just tap the brush and you can get that effect. Um, let's see over here. Now what I may do, uh, just for the sake of uh, the design, a lot of these have buds but they don't have uh, a flower. So what I'm doing here is just putting in some more extra flowers that are blossoming out. Okay, if, if, if I feel something's a little bit too, too dark, I just blot it, catch it before it can uh, dry too much. I don't spend an awful lot of time, uh, like I said, kind of being fussy. Uh, with the particular picture, because what I what I'm, I'm trying to do is uh, just bring out some of the essence of it, and uh, I certainly, uh, if you see the the way the plant grows, it's sort of like branches, and they're not too um, too curvy; they kind of come out straighter. But if I want to break up an area, let's say if I've got a shape. I can I can break that up. Make sure there's always a stem that goes into the plant. Come down to here. Now I can outline sort of some of the leaves too, just to kind of bring them out. Don't want to do the same thing. I'm going to. Do something with that. Add more into that. Now, when you do that, you can really uh, make this uh, plant jump out quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I brought one with me today. Whether I put it in the box or not. I had good intentions to bring it with me. If I don't have it this week, I'll bring it next week. Um, yeah, no, I don't have one today. Now, you can do the same thing with a flower. 
you can take a little bit and just add some uh, color into it. This one looks like it's kind of weak, so you, you might want to just outline it a little bit. But what you want to do is um, come back in, and I'm just going to use a smaller brush. And because the color is kind of weak, I'm going to go right back into the uh, paint gray here and probably see if I can bring some of the color back into this one. This one. Um, anytime you find that there's a weak area, you can always add more color into that. Just, just give it a few more dabs here and there, and you can kind of perk the color up a little bit. Um, let's see, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five. And put something out here. Now I got an even number six. Not that people probably count, but I do. <laughs> I'm something about uneven numbers. You know, if I'm doing trees, it's always got to be uh, one tree or three trees or five trees, an uneven number. The force of habit. Not a bad habit to get into. It just it just adds a little bit of off balance to your picture. You notice I'm just making some of these smaller because they might be off in the back here somewhere. After a while, you do so many uh, colors, uh, suggestion of the, the blossom, that you lose track of, you have to really count them and make sure. So when you have too many, you don't, you don't have to worry about the uneven number. I don't think anyone's gonna bother to spend too much time counting. Yeah, you know, see how that works. Um, Okay, now what, what I want to do here is I've got uh, quite a bit of um, light coming through here. So um, looking at the still life here, the background I have, the curtain and so forth, the background is much darker. So I can fill some of that in. Um, I don't use black straight. I'm using Payne's Gray. Use some paints gray, and then I put some um, get the brush out of the way here. Put a little bit of that uh, blue into it, and uh, you can make a very, very deep color. Now, um, what I'm going to do is uh, some of the areas that are too white. Let's put a little bit of a darker color in here. Kind of work around that. Work around it a bit. You have to be careful. You know, you might get too much too much dark in there. So what I have to do, I may have to take uh, my brush and sort of break up some of the edges. Oops, wait a minute. Need a little bit more water while while it's still wet. I pull some of that dark out, so it's more of a shadow in there. You don't want to really make a solid shape in there. Yeah. Pull that back out here. You can go back up in here if you want. And uh, then I have to pull it down on this side over here a bit. And everything that where the white is, you can sort of put shadow in it. You know, just use some of that color you have and just make it darker. You don't have to make everything dark, but 
but get rid of some of the, that those white uh, areas. Okay. Take the edge, pull the edge off, take the edge away, just pull it back out. So you're getting a softer shadow in there. That's the thing with watercolor, you know, uh, you can get, um, you can get uh, carried away with too many sharp edges. And what you want to do is kind of wet it and water it down sometimes. I can paint right over the, uh, the, the marker as long as it's dry. If you, you know, see, I can go over it, you can still see it. But what I'm doing is just taking some of the, a lot of the, um, that um, white stuff out. Paint it right out of there. You can leave some little specks. If it looks okay, if it looks like something else or whatever in there, you can leave it. You don't want to make it all solid color either. But you do want to soften those edges down. I think usually what watercolor is all about is soft edges, nice color, kind of sort of a brilliant color. Uh, you can take any color. That particular flower, by the way, does have blue in it. It sort of has some blue around the center, and then it comes out into that. Uh, We'll call it a pinkish color, but it's uh, more or less like a lizard crimson. See, if anything's too busy, I just blend, take the brush and use the brush like a scrub scrub brush, and see you can you can soften that out. Um, I got quite a bit of that to do through here. Probably go back to using a larger brush here. It doesn't take so long. <clears throat> when I came into the parking lot here today, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, plant growing, and they, I think they call it baby's breath or something like that. A white type of plant. I kind of like that color in there. Quiet it down. Even even if you um, go lighter with a color. Uh, it can be lighter, but it doesn't have to be just the white of the paper. See how that, see how you can work around in here? Go back up into there. I got a lot of white paper there. You can quiet that down. A lot of times you have to let certain things uh, kind of set up a little bit and dry before you get too close to the edge. Otherwise you end up with like, uh, like a smudge on the edge. Let's fill in that down here. Get some more color in there. There you go. Now a lot of times <clears throat> when you paint something, it looks okay. And I've said this before, it looks okay while it's wet. 
But uh, when you look at it in the morning, everything is sort of faded out quite a, quite a bit, quite a, quite a bit. So in that case, you have to kind of go back into it and give it another coat of paint. There you go. Yeah, you can quiet that down. Uh, now, what I think I mentioned it doing, I, I'm going to adjust a larger brush. So we can, whoops. <laughs> I don't want it that, that much blue all, all, uh, all at once here. But you can kind of fill this in. Now if I take some of the edge away from anything I can I can always put it back. <clears throat> Here we go. Sometimes you get um, maybe an area that might be uh too busy. I jump around. I kind of jump around a little bit. Now a lot of times what I do, if I paint out too much white, I can take my, um, I take my white acrylic paint Titanium, titanium, and I can um, put some of the white back in. Or if you let it dry, you can scrape it uh, with a knife and expose some of the white paper, you know, underneath. There you go. You get an idea how that's working. Now, I probably could have done a kind of a darker wash to begin with, but um, if I did that, I'd have a little bit more trouble probably. Uh, Trying to bring the white back where I wanted it to go it to be. This way, I can kind of work around. Now you can take. I got. I think I got a piece of. Oh, let's see, it's just a a piece of a cut up credit card. I cut up different sizes and shapes, and you can take the credit card. And while the paint's still wet. Let's see if I can find a spot. See how you can push the paint around. And that creates an, uh, another type of texture also. All right. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Getting a little bit too, a little bit too solid through there. But like I said, what you can do, you can always put some white acrylic. I don't use a white. They do have a, a watercolor white called Chinese white, and. Um, you can use that. The only trouble is it, 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 it doesn't, um, 
doesn't have so much of a solid color to it. It's not quite as opaque. So it's hard to cover up a dark area. So I want to go to the edge here. You can paint that in. Give it some color. Fill this in across here. I have to color right to the edge so that when I pull the tape off, I have a nice clean border around my artwork. Go up into here. Down the side. the paint doing something in there. That's pretty wild. A little bit different. Okay, filling around the sides. I like that little patch of pink. If I could repeat that somewhere else or not. Whoops. <laughs> I'm painting wet in the wet here, so sometimes I get too much water in one spot. And you end up with a big puddle. Okay. You can come down into here. <clears throat> You can break that, that up if you want. Uh, okay. Let's see what we got. It's coming out a little bit different. Um, what's going to happen is that it's going to dry. It's going to be lighter. A little bit, excuse me, a little bit heavy through here. Break up that corner here. <clears throat> Make that corner a little bit different. Leave that highlight in there. If you do something somewhere, uh, you, you might want to Repeat it. Yeah, we leave some highlight up in there. And maybe push some of the color up into there too. You feel you got too much green. If this is still wet, I, I, can, uh, I can soften that out. Use a paper towel. Well, let's see what, that's kind of creating a little bit of a water stain right in here. I might leave that in there. Different ways of creating texture. Sometimes you, you can spatter it with, a, with some paint. Okay. That kind of brings back a little bit of highlight. Sometimes when you're working on a particular picture, um, your ideas change about how to, how to manage it. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. how to manage it. Okay. Uh, 
All right. Now, I think I'll probably be going back into this, um, adding a little bit more um, texture with the with the maybe the marker. Some of this dry. Some of the effects aren't too bad. Um, like I said, I could put. I was wondering if if I don't like a particular area. I think this is going to be too wet. You you can go back in, and you can add a little bit more with your marker. Okay, maybe some thinner lines here and there, break it up. Uh, what I'm looking at here is a kind of a, quite a tangled, looks like a super highway that went astray here, all the lines breaking off. Sometimes I add some dots in there for texture, whatever it could be. And that's how that works. Okay. Let's see what else we can do. Still a little bit wet, so when you put the lines back in, it kind of uh, comes out a lot lighter. You know, you, you really sh should let it set up a little bit more. It's supposed to be a, yeah, have some things kind of go off towards the edge. Now, if you want, uh, if you want that to go, some of the lines to go to the edge, not a bad idea, just let some of them just kind of meander out r right to the edge of the, uh, paper. Okay. And that's kind of gives you the feeling of what what was happening out there or is happening. We've had so like I mentioned earlier all this rain has forced all the plants to grow like crazy and I'm quite, I've never seen that particular flower grow that tall before, but it has this, this summer. Okay, now, as I look at this, I think it's a matter of color distribution. So I'm gonna take some of this color I have here. And uh, I've got a lot of it through there, but I haven't put too much out here. Now that's a little bit too dark, so let's, let's see if I can blot that, quiet it down. That's still, I don't like the shape of it either. Maybe I can take some of the edge away. Yeah, looks better. Yeah. So sometimes when you do um, a lot of uh, paintings, um, sometimes they turn into like a, an experiment. You know, you're working, trying different things. And um, sometimes that experiment comes out interesting. And uh, some do it doesn't work as well. Oops. Yeah. A lot of times what happens is uh, when you're trying to stay within the time frame, 
you might put something in too soon and uh, it it will kind of blend you know it'll blend out so this is kind of smudgy into here that's in certain areas you like I said you can put the white back leave some of the white back in there another way of doing it sometimes you can uh, rework it and uh, bl blot your paper too um, just keep scrubbing it out I don't know what I can no too dry that's too dry so you can't kind of push the paint around um, I'm, I, I don't like this see it see it's too open and through here so I don't know if that's dry enough but that would be a good place to uh, um, to uh, kind of break that up a little bit more have something else in there uh, maybe have something go across through here so just to break it up um, see what else we have here okay Uh, these are about the same length so what I do sometimes is take um, and have something purposely come down that goes way off here somewhere just to break that up down through here try to figure out where I can put something else in there Okay. Kind of gives it a little bit more foundation here. Uh, I think I could have scratched that out and made it a little bit more white in there. Now, you can take, um, as far as scratching goes, you can take a razor blade sometimes. I can find one in here. I've got plenty of plastic. I don't know if I have, oh. Here's a razor blade. And um, I'll show you how you can, if you want to put some white back in, you can keep scratching this. See how you can put the white in there? You can put the white back. Um, it's safer probably you'll let the paper dry. See how you can put some more white, scratch it back in. Um, it probably might be safer if you let the paper dry uh, a little bit more than what I have. I'll put some more white in there. See how you can get some of that white back in there. Um, <clears throat> you're always thinking of a distribution of uh, not only color, but uh, shapes and uh, uh, line, you know? And um, putting some of that, uh, you can lighten it up a little bit more. If you want to break something up, yeah, I can put some of that white back in so it doesn't look quite like a solid patch of paint there. Okay. This might need a little bit more white. Let's put some white back up in here. If I can. Yeah, how's that? I don't know if it shows up enough. Uh, maybe a little bit more in here. That's using a razor blade. Uh, like I said, there's different ways. You can sometimes lift it out. Uh, if, it's, if the paint's wet enough, you can lift some of that out like a blotter. Now, um, the only thing else I'm going to add, I think, I'm going to put some uh, 
maybe a couple more buds on the kind of they're lighter color, but I might I might put some of those buds back with a darker color. Just on the ends. Yeah. Let's see. I guess you can just lay the brush down and put some of those specks back in. Now, again, if the uh, specks are too, a little bit too uh, noticeable, you want to just hit them with a paper towel and you can kind of soften them up. This one I'm not crazy about. This one's sort of creating a water stain. Um, so you, you can take some of that back out. Um, sometimes it's easier just to let your, your paper dry and then come back and uh, just take some uh, white acrylic and just paint over it. Paint over the, paint over the uh, color. And then after the white acrylic's dry, you can go back in and add a different shade or color, whatever you want to do with it. See what we got here. I'm just kind of picking at it a little bit. <laughs> Putting some of the texture back in. That probably would dry lighter, but if, you, if you're not sure, I just blot it. It doesn't, it's not quite as noticeable. Now another, another thing that we do sometimes, you could take, put some paint on the brush, and you can sort of spatter her a little bit. You, say if I wanted to do something with this area up in here, and tap that. Maybe that that's those specks are a little bit too too large. Maybe you want to quiet it down a little bit more than that. Ah, uh, use a smaller brush. <laughs> uh, not that one. I will try this one. Again, you. You just got to tap the brush out. Yeah, there's a few little spe specks in there. But you have to be careful. You don't want to get too carried away with the, all those specks. So to get some of these special effects, my gosh, you can spatter. Like I said, you can scratch the paper. You can Put some paint on, push the paint, uh, paint around with a, uh, with a piece of plastic. Uh, you can use a sponge, you can stipple with the sponge if you want to put some texture back in there. And uh, you do all sorts of different variations with it. Um, you just have to be careful that you, you don't get too carried away. And uh, Overdo it. Uh, a lot of times, the less you do, the better off it is. Leave a little bit to the imagination of the, the, the viewer. You know, when they look at something, they can decide what they want it to uh, probably look like. And just Put some specs, I'm gonna put some texture in that one. Yes, yeah, pick at it.
if any one area bothers me, I just pick at it, soften it out, or add some sort of texture to it. So it has some sort of overall harmony or unification here. What you do here, you, you repeat it somewhere else. I don't know if you can notice that, uh, the little specks in there, but what I'm doing is picking at the paint. taking some of that uh, some of the detail out. Now, a lot of times, you can work, uh, if you've got plenty of time, you can work on something like this and be very fussy and try to, you know, copy it exactly. But sometimes what you're doing is actually using some sort of a plant uh, as a, a reference to move on to do something a, a little bit different with the shapes and and the color and so forth. That's what's happening. Um, see what else I can do here. Okay. Kind of open it up a little bit. Like I said, sometimes you you have to kind of let some of these uh, paintings uh, kind of dry, and they'll dry a little bit lighter. The color will come out quite a bit lighter. And uh, then um, you can decide if you want to perk it up a little bit more, you can. So anyways, um, I'm going to call this one almost done. They're never quite done. I'm just going to take some of this tape off. I'd love to go over the edge a little bit more so I can catch it. I don't have great fingernails. Yeah. Well. I let the tape go a little bit over the, the edge so I, I could catch it and remove it. There you go. Oh, once you get it started, you can go, maybe go right around. Yeah, hopefully that's what will happen. Whoops. <laughs> Tape is very good. Tape is very good. Okay. Now what I usually do, um, if I sign it, there's usually some space down in the bottom, either on the left side or the right side. This is lighter, so I usually put my uh, signature in there. Here you go. That kind of finishes it off. I usually try to put my signature uh, lighter so it's not a distraction away from uh, the painting. And uh, a lot of times people say, did you sign it? I said, yeah, I signed it, but it's, it, you can see it's soft in there. Um, you, you don't want anything to uh, really try to, 
to distract from your picture. And sometimes signatures are so so obvious. That, um, I've seen artists sign their name in the sky with uh, a red ink or a red pen or whatever it might be. And so it, it was, if you put your signature up near the top, it really distracts uh, and takes a lot away from your painting. So most artists will sign it down at the bottom, either the left side or over here on the right side. Very seldom do you see uh, them sign it um, near the top of the picture. So anyhow, um, well, thanks for, for being with us this week, and uh, so uh, hope to see you back next time, okay? So w what's my old saying here? Brushes up, and have a good week. Thanks a lot.